Why? Just why? I just have I not sat through enough bad sequels this year? Seriously? Mega Mind 2, Kung Fu Panda 4. It just seems like so many of the sequels that are coming out this year have been crap. I was hoping this would be an exception. Not to mention it's getting like the highest praises imaginable for the rest of the critics and most audiences. But no, I hate to be that guy, but I'm here to tell it like it is. This movie's terrible. And I'm about to go off on it. In probably one of the angriest rants you will ever see out of me. So, if I haven't already made you leave, strap on in. This is going to be a rough one. What's up? What's happening? What's going on? Everybody? Welcome back to Animation Station. Your number one suggestion for anything in animation, including TVs and movies as well. I am your host, Jackson Small, and I am here to tell you why Inside Out 2 is a pile of crap. So, for those of you that may not remember, even hear that or you haven't watched my review, I love the first Inside Out. I think it's a great film, even if I think it does have some problems and it doesn't have much rewatch value. But it's still a great movie, and if I'm in the mood, I can pop it in and enjoy it anytime I'm in that mood. Yes, that mood is rare, but when the mood actually comes around and I want to watch it, I always have a great time, and I'm still remembered how amazing of a film it is. This, however, had red flags before I even started watching it. Sorry, had something something in my ear. How exactly? The marketing. The marketing of this movie told me right off the bat what it was going to be. It was going to be a desperate cash grab. A movie made by corporate rather than expressing creative freedom. A movie made to steal people's money off of their own nostalgia. Look, I hate to be that guy, okay? You guys think I like reviewing bad movies? No, absolutely not. But as I've said before a million times in many other videos and reviews, I built my channel off of brutal honesty. And that's what I have to do here. I have to give you my brutal honesty. Inside Out 2 is everything that an animated movie sequel shouldn't be. And considering this is from Pixar, it's unacceptable. So, what's the story here? Well, uh, Riley's a teenager. She's going off to hockey camp. But the emotions, joy, sadness, anger, fear, and disgust that we enjoy from the first movie, that we remember and love from the first movie, yeah, what happens to get kicked out by anxiety? And a couple other um, new emotions was it sloth, depression, and envy, I believe their name is. I don't remember all their names, nor do I care. Let's start with the, my biggest problem with the movie right off the bat. It is rehashing the same plot as the original. Sure, it may seem different on the surface because, you know, it's about trying to get the sense of self back rather than you know, the core memories, but it's still the same crap. It's still one or more of the five original emotions trying to get back to headquarters to save Riley before she does something terrible and awful because the other emotions have no idea how to control her whatsoever. Yeah, it's blatantly rehashed in the most obnoxiously obvious way imaginable. Like, you guys remember how I said that Avatar 2 was the exact same plot as the original? Here, it's the exact same scenario. And what a coincidence, they're both Disney movies. Maybe I expected too much. Maybe I thought, oh, well, okay, the marketing looks bad, but maybe this is like a Garfield scenario, where the marketing looks bad, but I see the movie, and it's amazing, and I like it, and I enjoy it. No. Marketing was bad, and the movie itself was bad. Look, I know this review's disjointed, I'm sorry, but I'm still just trying to 
gather my thoughts while I'm also trying to rip this movie apart. So please excuse me for it being disjointed. So, yeah. Story's a blatant rehash. In other words, it sucks. Alright. Number two, animation. Animation's still great here. They even mix in some 2D. I'll give them that. So, animation, not the problem here. I'm not going to even try ripping that apart because it doesn't need to be. The animation's still great here. Absolutely. That's the one part of this movie that I will 100% say is still great carrying over from the original. The fantastic animation. Voice acting. It's mostly fine, but I gotta talk about, I believe it's Ao Edebiri as the voice of anxiety. The, you know, the girl from Ada Elementary and the one who voiced the new April in the excellent TMNT Mutant Mayhem la uh, last year. Yeah, last year. Unfortunately, in this movie, she's probably at her worst, because anxiety is one of the weakest, most annoying, and most unoriginal and unenjoyable villains I think I've ever seen out of any Pixar movie. And yeah, that is taking Lightyear into account, by the way, with that stupid plot twist. Anxiety is a terrible villain, plain and simple. Alright, what about the other emotions? Um, Envy, fine. She's just there. She's fine. Depression, throws in a couple witty jokes here and there. But that's about it. Outside of that, she does nothing. And then there's embarrassment. The unexpected hero of the movie. I'm not going to say why, you're just going to have to figure that one out for yourself. Because yes, as much as I hate this movie, I still keep this stuff spoiler-free just in case you people still want to go see it. Because you're entitled to your opinion and you're allowed to like whatever you want to like. You guys come here to hear my opinion. In my opinion, this movie's crap. But maybe in your opinion, it's better. I mean, if the audience score is anything to go off of. So, yeah. The voice acting is still good here. They even have a video game voice actor voicing a video game character in a Forgotten Memory Vault. You guys saw the clip at Summer Games Fest. It sucked there, and it sucks even more here. No offense to the voice actor, but that was just a, a dumb idea. Dumb. So, yep, there's that. And then stories rehash, everyone over that. The characters. All the new ones suck. All the new ones. The hockey team people suck. Anxiety sucks. Envy, like I said, is fine. Depression sucks, because she barely does anything. And until, like, near the second half of the movie, embarrassment kind of sucks, too. Like, goodness freaking gracious, these new characters are terrible. Alright, what else is there? Um, oh, the writing. The writing in this movie is abysmal. You know how? Because take all that really adult incitement that made the original work so well, chuck it out a window, and only put in the same tired boring, derivative, kid-pandering, garbage writing that we gave so many animated films crap for. Yeah, all that insightful commentary and adult stuff that was in the original movie, gone. The writing in this movie is pandering, it is annoying, it is absolutely insulting to its audience, and it's outright just sucks in general. The, the writing in this movie is awful. The humor. Even somehow more awful than the writing itself. Because there's no, like, insightful jokes here. There's no clever wordplay. It's just a bunch of tedious, kitty humor. 
Yes, there's nothing like a... F there's no fart jokes or anything like that, no. But what you do get is stuff like sarcasm. Get it? Because it's a chasm, and when you echo over it, it, it makes your voice sound sarcastic. Stupid. Completely stupid. You want to know how many times I laughed in this movie? Once. There was one funny joke. That's it. I only laughed once. It was one joke. It was from anger. As in the emotion, not my emotion. It was from anger. It was legitimately funny. The rest of the jokes in here suck. Because they are the same kid pandering garbage we've been seeing in animated movies for the past two decades now. And it needs to stop. Is there anything else really worth talking about here? Because I, I think I've pretty much hit every note. The story's derivative and unoriginal. The new characters suck. Voice acting is a mixed bag. The humor sucks. The writing is absolutely abysmal. What's left? Okay, is there still some creative concepts? Let's go to that then. Creative concepts. Is there still creative concepts in how they try to visualize certain parts of human, human aspects? Yes, there is still some of that creativity. With stuff like beliefs and sense of self. That stuff is still insightful and still really cool. Problem is, the rest of it is just the same thing as the original. And once again, it's fooling everybody into thinking it's different when it's not. It's the same damn thing. Look, I have admitted in the past that I like my fair share of trash. Like, stuff that I know sucks, but I still enjoy anyway. Heck, the freaking awful Godzilla remake. I get a good, guilty pleasure laugh out of that one. But this can be a guilty pleasure because this movie's biggest sin besides its awful writing is that it is just flat out boring the hockey camp is boring the new characters and their conversations boring the force oh is the friendship gonna break up thing boring or Hey, let's just rehash the original ending with just a little bit of variation so it doesn't look like it's the same thing. Boring. I swear to you, almost the first 45 minutes of this movie, I was about to fall asleep in my theater chair. I was bored. I did not care about anything that was going on on screen. But that's not its biggest sin either. No. Its biggest sin is that it made Joy unlikable. Yeah, it took the one character that I actually really liked from the original that wasn't anger, anger's still great, but I mean, like, of the other emotions that I actually care about, they took Joy and turned her into that annoying freaking Anna Kendrick troll. Almost this entire film, she is... Endlessly annoying. Endlessly annoying. She's literally just Anna Kendrick troll, but it's not Anna Kendrick, it's Amy Poehler. And somehow she took everything that I praised about her and her performance that I had with the original movie, threw it out the window, and went back to the same cringe that I try to avoid. Because I know, I know she can be cringe. Most of the stuff I've seen her in is cringe. But Inside Out was that one exception where she did a legitimately great job playing the character. Here, no. They turned her into an annoying, awful stereotype. That's its biggest sin. Character assassination. Now look. Like I said when I started this review, if you're one of the people that still enjoys this movie, that still thinks it's good, and I'm just being a old grouch, fine. 
You're entitled to your opinion. Just respect mine. And in my opinion, this movie's terrible. Almost every little bit of it is terrible. And it's arguably one of the worst films I've seen this year. Not just animated films. Not just sequels. Overall, it is one of the worst movies I've seen this year. That's no hyperbole. And I hate to say it, I said the same thing with Furiosa. I'm going to say the same thing here. This movie deserves to tank. I'm sorry if that comes off as harsh, but that's the truth. Because trash movies need to stop being made. We need to stop supporting crap like this. We need to give our support to movies that deserve it. Speak with your wallets. And again, this is Pixar. We should expect more. We should expect way better from Pixar. But it seems like this entire 2020 decade, they've just been coasting. Luca was the one great exception. After that, they plummeted themselves off a cliff. Lightyear was bad. Turning Red was absolutely just insipidly awful. And now this. I was hoping this would maybe be the one movie that brings them back to form. It reminds me why I enjoyed this company so much. But instead, it reminds me of how much they have fallen since the 2020 decade started. Heck, you could argue before the 2020 decade started, they were starting to fall off. Because Toy Story 4, an unnecessary sequel that nobody wanted. But some people liked it, some people didn't. Me, I'm in the middle. I thought it was, I thought it was fine. But pretty much every other Pixar movie we've gotten since then has been a train wreck. You know why, you know why Pixar is under so much scrutiny? Because they were the leading innovators of animated films. They were the leading people, the leading example of how to make a quality family movie that can make both adults and kids of all ages, of any gender, of any sexuality, feel something. The only two emotions I felt watching this movie is anger and shame. Shame that this company has stooped this low. Now, I get it's probably the fault of their corporate overlords. I get it. But... I was still hoping that maybe, just maybe, Pixar could pull away from modern Disney's stupid corporate influence and make great movies again. But it appears that time is now over. Because it looks like all they want to do now is kid pandering garbage. And this is unacceptable. You know why animated movies like this piss me off so much? It's because... They don't treat kids with respect. They treat them like they're stupid. That's why these movies piss me off so much. When I rip apart a bad anime movie, it's because it treats its kids and its audience with zero respect. Zero. You want a family film to work? Respect your freaking audience. You want a film to work? Treat kids with respect. Feel free to challenge them, absolutely. Challenge them either emotionally or challenge them in ways that they can think about something. Just make everyone feel like they went through an experience. That's what movies are supposed to be. An experience to escape from the hell that is modern society. But instead, they just remind me of how much everything has changed. When I was a kid, when I grew up with Pixar, I remember having such an amazing time. And rewatching those movies now as an adult, I still love them. You could say, oh, well, you're blinded by nostalgia. No, it's not just nostalgia talking. It's not just the child side of my brain talking. 
it's because it's a legitimately great film. All those original movies they made in like the 2000s and the late 90s, they were great films because they respected their audience and they actually bothered to try. They put the audience's enjoyment above just profit gain. That's the biggest issue with modern filmmaking. A lack of originality and a severe lack of respect for the audience. And that's ultimately what this movie is. It's a disrespectful slap in the face that's trying to bank off of everyone's nostalgia of the original Inside Out to try and save whatever broken down hollow husk that Pixar is. It's time for them to stop coasting off their own name recognition and actually make good films again. But considering the fact that we have a fifth Toy Story movie on the way, yeah, we're getting a Toy Story 5, and the fact that their next two projects after that are reboots of two of their our iconic franchises, Incredibles and Finding Nemo, It's obvious they don't care anymore. So why should I still care? Because I know what this company is capable of. And movies like this, from them, legitimately pisses me off. It's time for Pixar to stop coasting by on their name recognition, ignore the stupid freaking mandates and mandatory garbage that modern Disney tries to shove down their throat and actually make great films again that can appeal to anyone of any age, gender, religion, sexuality, etc, etc, etc. My point is, stop making, pa pa stop making kid pandering garbage and treat your audience with respect. I wanted to give you a pass, Pixar. I originally was just going to skip this movie altogether, honestly. Because I didn't want to be too harsh because of how much of a place in my childhood heart that you have. But almost every single movie that I've seen from you in this decade has been trying to kill this side of my heart over and over again. And I'm done legitimately done with your crap. Either you can improve or you can just become Disney itself. I'm sorry to be so harsh and I don't mean any disrespect to the animators or the people that actually made the movie. It's not their fault. This one has Disney's corporate greedy mitts all over it. And it just seems like that's all it's been for Pixar. Just following the higher calling of freaking corporate instead of trying to make an amazing movie for the audience. I've already ranted for over 20 minutes, goodness gracious. And I'm sorry to keep harping on this, but it's important. It may not seem important to you, but it is an extremely important part of filmmaking. Respect your audience. This kid pandering garbage needs to stop being made. We need movies that will challenge kids while also treating them with the utmost decency and respect. Instead of treating them like they're stupid. Kids deserve respect. And this does anything but that. I'm done. So, let's go ahead and get to my final verdict for this movie. It is probably going to be the lowest I give to any animated film this year outside of Mega Mind 2. And it's probably going to be one of the most controversial scores you will ever see on this entire channel. This is probably going to lose me a good 10, 15 subscribers, but I built my channel off honesty. And unfortunately, this is one of those times where 
watching a movie felt like a chore rather than a fun pastime. And that's why I have to be that one person and tell you guys to not see this movie because it is not worth your time and sure as hell is not worth your money. Final verdict for Inside Out 2, it's a crushing disappointing, it's an unacceptably abysmal 2 out of 10. It's a 2. It's saved from being worse by its great animation and some creative ideas. That's it. Lack of respect for the audience, abysmal writing, awful humor, completely rehashing the original story with zero freaking actual... This movie makes me so angry I can't even talk. But you get my point. No respect for the audience. Awful writing. Abysmal, abysmal humor. Terrible new characters. And a freaking... Horrendous excuse of a villain and just a story that feels unnecessary because all it does is rehash the original with little to no differences whatsoever. It is dull, it is boring, it is tedious, it is monotonous, and it is aggravating. That's all this movie is and that's all this movie ever will be. Don't buy the DVD. Don't buy a movie ticket. Don't watch it on streaming. It is not worth it. Skip it. So it can fade into obscurity. Just like Lightyear. Because it deserves the exact same fate. Pixar, you better come out swinging with Toy Story 5. Or you're going to be in serious trouble. Because I'm at my breaking point with you. I hate to be this harsh because you mean so much to my childhood, but I cannot defend you when you make trash like this. Get your crap together. And that's it. Now I don't have to talk about the movie until December. Thank goodness. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you watched all the way through to the end without rage quitting, I thank you immensely. It means a lot to me. And uh, like, share, and subscribe for happier videos like this almost every single day. And um, stay tuned because there is still a good bit left. Because while we have done... This movie review, well, I mean, we still got Spongebob content coming, so. Yep, you have a lot more of that to look forward to. You're getting two or three episode reviews today, so. Don't tune out just yet. We still have a little bit left to go. So. Until then, thanks for watching. I'm Jad Small of Amy's Station. Do not watch this movie. And I'll see you next time. Peace. We cannot take it anymore, the time is too long to cancel, but we're ready for